the next segment, <laughs> Taz and Starks and Cage. Great promo, horrible subject matter. You're starting to see a pattern here. They come out, and Taz is mad at Tony Khan for not figuring them in. They don't have a match tonight. They're not booked on the pay-per-view. Tony Khan is now going to be another Dixie Carter in another way. They're starting to talk more and more about him being the matchmaker, him being the owner, him making these matches. Let me explain this real quick. Tony Khan's name means absolutely dick all of shit as far as being the one to make the matches. And I'm sorry that they can't relate this to him and be honest with him. But the only people that give a fuck that he's making the matches are the people who have the fantasy booking fantasies like he does, which is their existing audience, and nobody else would give a shit, and it's another reason why they're never going to get anybody else to care. That's why every time you had a, an authority figure or a commissioner or a promoter or someone in the territory days or even in the major companies to come out and make a match... It was somebody that the fans recognized as having a long history in wrestling. A retired wrestler is now commissioner or matchmaker. It's Sergeant Slaughter. It's fucking Bullet Bob Armstrong or the promoter himself. Even when Frank Tunney was the WWF president, that was because he'd been a promoter in Toronto and on television for years and years. And the fans, okay, they can buy that, that this guy would be make a match in a major company between big-time professional wrestlers. But suddenly, Tony Khan is making the matches. Even if he is, don't tell people. Because that just is another thing that makes you look fucking low rent. But because he has to be acknowledged as the booker, because he's so proud of his booking. Because in his mind, this shit makes sense. So instead of having... I don't know, Arn Anderson, one of the great promos of all time and a pro wrestler that everybody respected. Instead of having him holding a towel and hiding his face with a notebook to give Cody tips, let him be the commissioner and sign the matches. Try to keep those heels in check. That way he could actually do something. But anyway, so all Taz did was say, Tony Khan, we're mad at you because you ain't figured us in. Tony Khan, Tony Khan. And we're going to be on the pay-per-view one way or the other. He had a great promo, did a real good job. He had absolutely nothing to fucking sell. Do you agree with that? I agree with it. I was thinking during this match, you know, I've made comments about Cody in the past, the things I don't like, and I've compared some of his worst qualities with some of Dusty's worst qualities in terms of ego. But the old TBS thing of everyone coming out and doing promos and having to talk about Dusty, that's becoming Tony Khan. Everyone on the show is talking about Tony Khan. I hope he doesn't become an on-air character because I do not think he could pull it off. I don't think he should pull it off. Like you said, I was thinking the exact same thing you just said. Arn Anderson. Any of these legends they brought back, anyone would have been better in that role. You don't have to pretend he doesn't own the company, or excuse me, his dad doesn't own the company and put him in charge of the company. You don't have to pretend he's not there and not the person... He with, doesn't have to be fucking serving up the hot dogs at the concession right. stand either. It's not like he has to do everything, even if he is apparently doing everything. You have a matchmaker, you have a commissioner, you have someone in that role. You can't tell me it wouldn't be a better way to use Arn Anderson than whatever the hell they've done with him since he's been with Cody. He means nothing in that role. It's done nothing. But this is a way he can cut his promos without getting physical because that's something he also shouldn't be doing anymore. I completely agree. It was the same thought I had. And it just reminded me of when, when Russo went to WCW. And remember, we didn't see him on camera for a while. We heard his voice and everything was the powers that be. And then the wrestlers couldn't figure out what that was. So they would start calling him the powers to be, not realizing that's not what it was. <laughs> but then eventually he's on camera. And eventually he's in the middle of everything. I'm not saying it's going to be that. But the fact that nonstop... Oh, we just heard from Tony Khan. Well, and that was a mistake also, because here's another thing. There was another fucking egotistical moron that thought that he was a bigger deal and a bigger star to more people than he really was. And he thought that it was big news that a writer from one company would go to another company. That's why he had to stick himself on television, because everything, obviously, in wrestling always revolved around the writer. 
It's a blind spot for somebody that's a fucking mark for what they're now able to do because somebody has put them in that position and they don't understand the old principle just because you can cut your own ear off doesn't make you Van Gogh and they feature themselves. Or if they don't feature themselves, other guys just get brownie points by talking about them because those guys know that this particular person is so proud of the position that he's able to be in because he gave it to himself that he wants it known. Other than that, great promo. Ricky Starks is fantastic. I keep saying Wonder- it week after week. Yes. Some guys can ham it up in the background and it gets a little too cheesy. His facial expressions are perfect every time. Perfect. And Taz is a great promo. I wish he had better material. I wish there was something better he was talking towards. But I like Team Taz. I can't complain about anything with Team Taz. I just hope this trend of nonstop mentions of Tony Khan by the commentators and now guys doing promos, I hope it comes to an end. Well, it didn't on this program. There's more to come. 